English sometimes, Bahasa Melayu, but uh, when I speak my Bahasa Melayu, they feel I'm from Indonesia. And when I go to Indonesia, they know I'm actually from Canada. But uh, Malaysia is now my home, so uh, I, I live here. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about, um, about some of uh, the opportunities to do bonding and to uh, the use case for, uh, for the actual um, uh, ability to do uh, bonding, load balancing, and to, to do it through uh, actual uh, fiber monitoring. So the challenge is to be able to use fiber whenever we are uh, working in Malaysia, working in Southeast Asia, uh, the copper is so bad that we have to switch to fiber. So forget copper, just work with fiber. And so then with fiber, we can start to work at 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig, soon 400 gig. So we hope to expect to see those in our next uh, MUM presentation uh, when we see the 400 gig products coming on. Um, Fiber gives you high availability through uh, diverse routing, and I wanted to talk about that. And uh, this gives you an opportunity just to do the, um, to do quickly do the provisioning so that you can have more fibers to bond together. And uh, with that bonding, you want to provide some fiber monitoring and an opportunity just to have a design, by design, to have diverse routes, multiple, multiple routes. And... Uh, with that monitoring, you can start to do some fast provisioning and have some predefined cables that you know uh, there and cores that are good. And this gives you then an opportunity to move to bandwidth, uh, uh, bandwidth on demand. So if you're in Southeast Asia, you know in the last few weeks in Malaysia uh, specifically, uh, Telecom Malaysia has had a uh, cut on one, one of the submarine cables. So. We are served with, uh, with fibers that come into uh, um, Kwantan, Mersing, maybe a few coming across the, uh, the causeway from Singapore, uh, and some over here in Penang. But th this is where we get our bandwidth. So our bandwidth is uh, fiber from uh, under the sea. Most of it's coming in from uh, Guam, coming in from the Philippines, coming in from uh, places over here such as South Korea, Hong Kong, and then as well coming in uh, through Europe. So once we get onto the land, we then have uh, fiber optic cables here inside of Malaysia. And so what we need to do is to provide our, our bandwidth is to start to have some uh, ability to do bonding and to have alternate routes. And so with alternate routes, we get this high availability. So what do we mean by high availability? We want to typically have a service level agreement of fix it in less than four hours. And we want to have this um, mean time to repair perhaps within less than three hours. So we talk in our industry about having five nines. So five nines means 99.999% uptime. This is a very, very tough metric, a very tough KPI to meet. And uh, what this means is that in each year, in one year, with five nines, you're down for zero days, zero hours, but for five minutes and 15 seconds per year. So if you start as a network architect to think about providing five nines, this is where you need to then meet the challenge for the users. This is the expectation that people have when they pick up their handphone, that they will get a dial tone, that they will have an opportunity to get connected. So whether that connection is Wi-Fi or fiber or copper, we want to be able to provide that high availability. Many of the times we don't get from our service provider five nines, in fact, we get nine fives. So sometimes the uptime is not 99%, but 55%. So it gets switched around. <laughs> um, but if you start to go down this list and have four nines or three nines, so with three nines, we can be down over the year for eight hours. It's still a tough metric to meet. 
But um, whenever we want to do some bonding, if we can be doing some bonding, if we can be providing multiple fibers, then if one fiber goes down, then maybe we're just crippled and we're going a little bit slower. So that's the opportunity from a network architecture point of view that I wanted to talk to you about, about today. And so the tasks then are to provide some alerts if we do get a fiber cut and switch to uh, some alternate fibers to be able to have not just our traffic going over one core, but multiple cores. And if one breaks, we lose bandwidth, we don't lose connectivity. And so we want to detect, issue a trouble ticket, dispatch with a work order, inform the client that, we, that we're down, and then do a restore, and then do an RCA, a root cause analysis. This is, this is my life. And then we want to add or provision on demand. On demand, we quickly want to add some new devices. So how do we do this monitoring? So we can do this monitoring using MicroTix uh, SFPs. If you look at the SFPs that you can see from some of the vendors outside here, it's got these little initials, DDM. And this one here, DDM as well. So this is fantastic. MicroTix has actually adopted this specification of the SFF committee. And so this is in fact then a specification for providing digital diagnostic monitoring. So this comes in the SFPs. When we're using fiber, we just get to slide these in. And so we get to slide these things in and we can use a dual core fiber. So with a dual core fiber, we are transmitting at 1310 and we're receiving at 1310. But obviously, since we're going at the same lambda, the same frequency, the same color of light, what we're gonna need to do is to transmit on a separate and receive on a separate core. So this we call a duplo or duplex connector. So we get a transmit and receive. But you can get a single core, which is bi-directional. So it's bi-directional, I can transmit in blue and receive in green. So I can be transmitting here at 1330 nanometers and receiving at 1270 nanometers. So this is on the MicroTik product, which is uh, running at 10 gig. We call that SFP plus. And on the SFPs running at 1.25 gig, we're you know, we can run these as one core, as a bi-die, bi-directional, or two cores. So this gives us an opportunity to provide some testing of the actual cores. So while the network is running, we've got an opportunity to be doing some testing. So what have we got to test? Well, typically, through the streets of Jakarta, through the streets of KL, we're running fiber, which is trenched, which is cut into the ground. The spec says we want to drop it down about 1.1 meters. Typically, in KL, it's my observation that it gets dropped down about one, two centimeters. Um, <laughs> and so uh, you'll get fiber cuts. So you want to, as a network architect, think about diverse routing, think about high availability. Now, once you do the trenching, and the trenching takes is something which is about 100 ringgits per meter in KL, so translation, that's about today's uh, dollar. That's about $25 per meter to cut up, the, cut up the street to put the fiber in the ground. So once you cut up the street, you then put in the fiber. But the fiber is only now about one US dollar a foot, maybe in the range of five uh, ringgit per meter. So typically, now what we can do is put in plastic tube or a duct. So we put these ducts in place, and in the duct you could have in here perhaps a thousand cores. And then beside it, another thousand cores. So this could be one service provider, another service provider. And so this is a, a seven-way duct. So in the duct, we install right in here perhaps a thousand cores, 500 cores, 200 cores, or maybe even just 48 cores. What I'm saying is there's lots of spare cores. With those spare cores, we've got an opportunity to, we call those dark fibers, 
to do constant monitoring using those DDM modules from Microtech. So we have an opportunity to monitor. And then when you take a look at the cable makeup, it's made up of a cable which has tubes. In each tube, we typically put 12 cores, fiber cores. And then your traffic is going over one core. So we can use the one core to monitor what's happening in your network. So it could be that you've got a 96 core cable running down the street. And as a service provider, you want to be able to say, I'm going to have 96 cores. Maybe I'm using 25 of them. Maybe I'm using 48 of them for my customers, for the clients, for the users. They're carrying live traffic. Now, what we can do is we can mix the signals if we're using a different lambda. So you saw some of those colors, 1310, 1490. If we're using a different color, we won't disturb the user traffic. So that gives us an opportunity, but we could even just go away and use some of the unused cores. We call those dark fibers. So we can use Microtech to be able to do constant monitoring of the actual cores that are not being used, the dark fibers. So typically what we do in fiber monitoring is to be able to take one tube per core to do the monitoring, to do the testing. Is the tube fine? Did somebody hit it with an ax? Did somebody just derail the train and cut the fiber? So we can do constant monitoring. So this is low cost monitoring. So we can do this with a 200 US dollar CRS. So we can plug in a CRS module looking like this, have an opportunity to go plug in a CRS. This thing's got 10 SFPs running at one gig. It's got one running at 10 gig. But we can just take these 10 and have an opportunity to send constant traffic back and forth on dark fibers, fibers the customer's not using. Now, what we can do is to have 24-7 monitoring of the actual cable that's in the ground, that's either aerial or in the ground, and then have a d an early detection of a fiber cut and to be able to start to come up with some provisioning of some other cables. Now, if we're doing some constant checking, we can actually have some known good cables. We know which ones of the dark fibers are actually good fibers are working and are good at sending and receiving traffic. Maybe some of them ha else have attenuation. There were some bad splices. There were some bad connectors. So this way, we get a list of known good fibers. And all we're doing is just exploiting the DM modules that we talked about inside of the Microtech SFPs. So the SFPs have got these DDM right here, modules, and each of them are printed with DDM. So these low-level diagnostics just come up in router OS, and we can, in fact, then find out what is known good. So typically, the cable is made up of uh, tubes. And so we get four tubes, 48 cores, uh, 12 tubes, 144 cores, 18 tubes, 216 cores. Now, I told you it takes about $25 per meter in the world to dig up US dollars to dig up the streets to go put that fiber in the ground. Now, the cost of the cable, though, is not $25. The cost of the cable is $1. And that's typically it pretty insensitive with the price of. So the deployment cost is insensitive to how many cores you're going to put in. If you put in one or one tube, 12, or four tubes, or 12 tubes with 144, you still have to dig up the streets. So you incur that $25 US per uh, meter uh, construction cost. So how many you put in, I'm saying this gives you an opportunity to be able to deploy spare cables, spare cores, that you can then have an opportunity to treat as dark fibers 
treat as fibers that you could, in fact, then design in your network and have an opportunity to actually monitor. So we transmit and we receive, and we've got these different components. We map them to a, uh, uh, a GIS map, geographical geospatial map. And you want to do that because the cable could be going from site A to B to C, but over here when it gets to some pit in the ground, it could be coiled up. So you want to then be able to use an OTDR, an optical time domain reflectometer, to say where is that length of cable and what are the losses. So we want to correlate cable distance to map distance. So if there's a cut, it's going to say there's a cut in the cable at 4.3 meters, but we have to translate 4.3 kilometers, let's say, all the way through to a map in the network. And then we get to see with the OTDR where we're actually uh, broken. You need to have a business process as well to be able to say, uh, what do you do when you get a cut? How can we start to do this correlation that I talk about of a single core to a tube to a cable to an actual duct? So that hierarchical structure gives you the opportunity to work at what I'm showing you is this layer zero. What we've heard a lot about today is router OS working here at layer two, the MAC layer. We saw in the last two presentations the MAC layer, that media uh, <laughs> address. And then we saw at layer three the IP addresses. So router OS is doing this for you, but I'm showing you that router OS is giving you the opportunity to work as well using these diagnostic modules to be able to offer fiber as a service, to be able to do bonding of multiple, multiple channels. So you can have an opportunity to be doing constant transmit receives and at a gross level of 20 kilometers, be able to detect that there's an outage. Now, once you detect there's an outage, you then switch to an OTDR, which can find out within 0 0.8 meters, sub one meter, where is the break to do your repair, to meet that SLA, to meet that mean time to repair uh, KPI that we talked about. So you want to detect, alert, dispatch, repair, and go through the business process. But you've got the tools here in Router OS to be working at the layer three, the layer two, but also then at the layer number one, this physical layer of, of what's happening in the network. So here's my last slide in summary. Just using the SF, uh, SPFs in the network, using the digital diagnostic modules, we can show transmit receive results and have an opportunity to build up a database of known good cores, which are, are dark fibers, which have not yet been allocated to, to customers. And then when we want to allocate to provision, we have a list of known good cores that we can give a customer a brand new fiber that can then be used to create some bandwidth on demand and create an opportunity to be able to, to build up uh, and have multiple paths, get that high availability we talked about. So these known good fibers are verified fiber cores and just gives us a way to provision so we can be doing bandwidth on demand, we can provide then bonded channels and have the ability to have a connection which is one gig, 10 gig, but multiple 10 gigs as well. And you've seen with some of the products that we can actually bond up um, multiple channels, but you need to know what's happening at this physical lower layer. Okay, that's the information I wanted to, to uh, cover. I'm here at the conference today. Please uh, stop me, ask questions. Uh, you've got on the slides uh, my uh, uh, handphone. You've got my email address. It's, uh, and uh, I work at uh, ZDSL Networks here in Bahad. This is Malaysian-based uh, 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 company. Please uh, uh, come up and see me and uh, be happy to chat about uh, some of these uh, opportunities to use uh, Microtech to do monitoring and to do bonding. Thank you. How do I do on your time?